I'm excited to talk to you today about overactive bladder, a common bothersome problem that many of our patients face with a variety of innovative treatments available. I'm Dr. Brian Linder, an assistant professor in the Department of Urology as well as the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Mayo Clinic. I'm looking forward to sharing details about an article I co-authored with Dr. Ruben Raju for Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The title of our article is Evaluation and Management of Overactive Bladder in Women and is scheduled to be featured in the February 2020 edition of the journal. As a background, overactive bladder is a highly prevalent symptom complex, impacting up to one in six adults in the United States. The classic symptoms include urinary urgency and frequency, with or without incontinence, as well as nocturia. In terms of an evaluation, a detailed history and physical as well as a urinalysis to look for urinary tract infection or other concerning etiologies are typically where things begin. If concerning findings are found on the urinalysis, such as microscopic hematuria, another test set may be necessary. In terms of treatment, the management of overactive bladder typically progresses in a stepwise fashion, from conservative measures to oral medications and even procedures that can be performed in the office or in the operating room. Initial management typically focuses on lifestyle modifications including the avoidance of bladder irritants, things like caffeine, carbonation, citrus, spicy food, and alcohol, the use of timed voiding or urge suppression techniques, the management of constipation if present, and discussing the impact that weight loss can have on urinary symptoms. For those with pelvic floor muscle weakness on exam, pelvic floor physical therapy can also be utilized. There are also oral medicines available, both anticholinergics as well as beta-3 agonists, which can help relax the bladder. Choice of a specific medication is based on the risk-benefit profile and in discussion with the individual patient. For those with symptoms refractory to the measures we just discussed, there are other treatments available that can be performed in the office or an operating room setting, such as bladder Botox injection, sacral nerve modulation, or tibial nerve stimulation. Bladder Botox injection is a cystoscopic procedure that can be performed in the office or in the operating room depending on the patient's level of comfort and preference. During the procedure, a cystoscope is inserted into the bladder and a small needle is used to inject the medicine into the bladder wall. Many women will have significant improvement with this treatment despite not having had success with the measures we already discussed. Given the nature of Botox, the treatment will wear off over time and would need to be redone. On average, this is roughly every six months. One note about this therapy is that there is a small risk of urinary retention and so patients would need to be willing and able to catheterize themselves temporarily until the venison wore off should they encounter this. Another option is sacral neuromodulation, which involves the placement of a small implantable device which sends electric signals to the nerves to the pelvis. Similar to bladder Botox, many women will have significant improvement in their symptoms with this despite not having responded to oral medicines or other therapies. Sacral neuromodulation is performed in two stages. During the first procedure, a small wire is placed through the S3 foramen and used to send signals to the pelvic nerves. Patients test this lead for one to two weeks using an external battery source. If they're having symptom improvement, they would then proceed with placement of a more permanent battery subcutaneously. One note about this therapy is that it has FDA approval for both urinary incontinence, which is refractory to other measures, as well as bowel incontinence, or accidental bowel leakage. So for patients with dual incontinence, sacral neuromodulation may have an added benefit. A third type of procedure is tibial nerve stimulation. This is a procedure performed in the office using a small needle which is placed behind the medial malleolus and then stimulated externally for 30 minutes. This therapy is given once a week for 12 weeks and if patients have adequate symptom improvement they can proceed to maintenance therapy which is roughly every three weeks. So in summary, overactive bladder is a highly prevalent condition that can have a large impact on our patient's quality of life. It's important for clinicians to understand the initial evaluation and management, including the use of behavioral modifications, pelvic floor physical therapy, and oral medications. For patients with refractory symptoms, consideration should be given to specialty referral for further discussion of more advanced therapies, such as bladder Botox injection, sacral neuromodulation, or tibial nerve stimulation. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoy reading the article. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. 
If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.